we're going to discuss our next section that we're going through in pre-calculus, and that is conic sections. You've dealt with uh, certain types of conic sections quite a bit. The circle and the parabola are not going to be new. We've dealt with those uh, before, but we will go on and, and look at ellipses pretty in-depth and hyperbolas pretty in-depth. So let's start by talking about the circle. And so we'll just preview why the circle is considered a conic section. So in geometry, the definition of the circle relies on a cone and a plane that's intersecting it and intersecting it in such a way that it forms a circle. So the base of the cone and the plane are parallel to one another and when that plane intersects the cone, that conic section is a circle. The algebraic definition is a set of points in the plane that are equidistant from a fixed point in the plane and we call that the center of the circle. So things that are important for a circle, of course the center of the circle, we in general call that the point H comma K. H is going to be the X coordinate of the center point, K is going to be the Y coordinate of the center point, and in all of our conic section work for the center of the circle, the center of a uh, an ellipse, the vertex of a parabola, the vertices, of a hyperbola. HK is something we're going to stick with for all of that. So HK is something you need to become comfortable with. And of course every circle has a radius. That is the distance from the center to the surface of the circle that's constant all the way around the circle for 360 degrees or for 2 pi. So in a circle both variables are squared. We generally use X and Y. The standard center radius form for uh, the equation of a circle is the quantity x minus h squared plus the quantity y minus k squared and that equals the radius squared where h and k are the x and y coordinates for the center point of the circle. So this says find the center and the radius for each of the following circles. Well it's in uh, the center radius form so it's very easy to find. We know that we have x minus h and we have y minus k. So when we have a plus here we know that we are talking about y minus a negative value. So here the x coordinate of the center of the circle is a positive 3 and the y coordinate is a negative 1 and we can see our squared is 16 so the radius would be 4. The center point for circle number 2 is x equal negative 5 or h equal negative 5 and k equal positive 2 and the radius would be the square roots of 15. The center for circle number 3 is h equals 0, k equal 2. We don't have this in standard form because the constant is on the left side of the equal sign and the radius squared is always on the right side of the equal sign. So we need to move that negative 9 over here algebraically and make it positive 9 and therefore our radius would be 3. So sometimes we have to do just a little bit of algebraic manipulation to get it into the form where we can recognize the center and recognize the radius. Write the equation of a circle centered at 2, negative 7 and having a radius of 5. So this tells us h is 2, k is negative 7, and r squared would be 25. So it's just a matter of putting those values in the formula for the equation of a circle. This says describe uh, x minus 2 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 0. Well, we're going to have trouble having a circle with a radius of zero. So frankly what this is is just a point. It's a point that is 2, negative 1. And now we describe this equation, x plus 1 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals negative 1. Well, we're not going to have a radius that is a negative value. So there is actually uh, no equation here. There's no graph that we can uh, graph that would have a radius of negative 1. It doesn't have any meaning when we talk about the equation of a circle. So I know you're familiar with circles. I know you've dealt with circles a lot. Sometimes we are given just the um, equation and we have to put it in the center radius form and that requires completing the square. So we're going to get lots of practice in our conic section work of uh, reminding us how to complete the square. We want to gather like terms, the x squared term, the x term, 
is gathered together, we complete that square. And then the y squared term and the y term are gathered together, complete that square. Whatever we add on the left-hand side to complete the square, we've also got to add on the right-hand side so that we keep the integrity of the equal sign. So this you did in Algebra 2, not very difficult. But again, we gather the like terms. We take half of the single degree term and square it, and we're going to add that. So we're going to take half of 6 and square it. So that's going to be a, a 9. We'll add 9 for that term. We'll take half of negative 4 and square that. So negative 2 squared is positive 4. Whatever we do on the left-hand side, adding the 9, adding the 4, has also got to be done on the right-hand side. And therefore, we are still equal when we do that. Taking half of that value, b, and squaring it and add it makes each one of these a perfect square. Therefore, we can write it as x plus half of b quantity squared and y minus half of b quantity squared and then it turns out that this value is 25 so we know the center for our circle is negative 3 positive 2 and our radius is 5 so if we wanted to graph that we certainly could all you need is the center point and the radius and you can graph any circle so we are going to be doing some completing the square work when we work with our circles uh, but that's really the the only additional algebra that we have to worry about so that's it for the equations of circles come to class next time and we'll practice these equations of circles